big thank you to the guys at We Are Stoke for sponsoring my match day vlogs this season. You can check them out on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, linked in the description. Hey up guys, Harvey SFC here and welcome to episode 7, I want to say, of the Harvey SFC podcast. I do apologise there wasn't an episode last week, that's because Virgin Media can't make internet that actually is stable and can connect a video call. But we're trying to do it again today. Um, but yeah, we're back, joined by the Bear Pit Seller... Uh, we're joined by Perfect TV's Elliot Yates, as usual. Um, so, quite a bit has happened since the last podcast uh, we brought out. Nathan Jones has gone back to Luton. We're going to start off with that because it happened first. Uh, Elliot, what, I was about to call you Nathan. Elliot, <laughs> what were your thoughts on Nathan Jones returning to Luton? Um, it's a bit weird, actually. I think you've seen other managers do it before in the past. Um, Eddie Howe went to manage Burnley for a time and then he went back to Bournemouth. So, obviously, he's lo he loves Luton, as you can tell. I don't think... He's certainly the worst manager in my time, but like I've had Pulis, I've had Mark Hughes, I've had really sort of good times as a as a football fan of Stoke. I think no manager really goes to a club to intend to lose three get to, to win three games in a year and lose yeah. most of them. I, I don't think that happens. You can see by Nathan, you can see he's probably a sound guy, really cared about the club and meant everything he said to give us a team to be proud of. I just think the diamond was his weak point. Just kept that philosophy for so long when really we were much better in four three threes as we saw at games like Birmingham away and the decisions like you know playing Cameron Carter because at right back I just think it was the right time to actually get a change and we've got that change and now we've got a brilliant manager and we yeah. can look forward to the future under Michael O'Neill. The, the thing with the Nathan Jones diamond you have to have the right players to play it and you know, you look at just the wing backs, you know, you need fast, young, athletic, and we bring in Stephen Ward. It doesn't really sort of fit that criteria. Yeah. Um, but we saw where that diamond could work at like Derby at home, where Hogan and Gregory were linking up really, really well. But then, it, yeah, it, if something, yeah. don't fix what isn't, no, don't fix what isn't broken. Uh, and unfortunately, tinkered a little bit with that front two. And um, yeah, because we had the Preston on the Wednesday and it didn't work for the first half. So he brought Sam Vokes on, which confused me. Uh, McLean at wing back didn't work. But uh, no. if he's got the right players at Luton, he can do a good job. I do think they will get relegated. Um, so he'll, he'll have to go sort of back to square one where he was. Yeah. Um, he's sort of taken one step forward and two steps back almost. Um but yeah, he did. Go on. He's going to get Go it on. right one day. And um, he's a really, really nice guy. You know, he, if you were around in them times, uh, he did the intro for me. Yeah. Remember the intro? At yeah, least, yeah at, least, that. at least the Luton vlog has got an intro now. Um, so, yeah, Nathan Jones has gone back to Luton. It was quite a mixed reception from the Luton fans. Some wanted him back. Some didn't. Weren't some weren't happy with him being back. But... Um, no, whatever's best for Nathan, because um, he was, I have to say, he was a little bit out of his depth at Stoke. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And I think what you said about fans getting mixed reception from him coming back, I think that was importantly addressed. Look, we were building a Premier League club here, you know, it's, yeah. I shouldn't have left. That's one thing that got the, some of the fans back on his side. And also the um, absolute top quality uh, moment when um, he got the, man, the League One Manager of the Month award <laughs> in his Stoke tracksuit. And I think it was good that he apologised. The exact quote was, um, it was either in a Stoke tracksuit or bare chested. So um, yeah, it's good that he's got the Luton fans back on his side now because they can really look forward. And they're in a time of getting relegated. The last thing they need is managers to get on the, to, what's it, not managers, the fans to get on the managers back. Yeah, it's what it probably would have been like if we'd have got Pulis back in instead of O'Neill. You know, it would have completely split the fan base in half. And, at a time like we were around November, late October, it was really what we didn't need. Um, but I'm glad everyone's bought into O'Neill and um, I really cannot wait for next season. Speaking of next season, we'll move this on slightly. The foot, not, not the football, football has been penciled back in. The Premier League is due to start on the 17th of June with Aston Villa taking on Sheffield United and the other side Sheffield Wednesday. Um, and then the championship is penciled into kickstart again on the twentieth of June. 
What are your thoughts on it? My thoughts on it is that I thought I was a passionate sort of null and voider. I thought that the uh, non-league sides, the League Two sides, the League One sides, it's really unfair on them to be having a relegation in this crisis. Like a relegation can do like, damaging effects yeah. when the season's played out just casually. So when you've got this going on and you can barely afford to pay your staff and you have a relegation, it's really like sad. And it shows the ways of the EFL, really, the way football's going, this big money market. Obviously, yeah. there's going to be record TV figures coming in for the Premier League. That's mm. why all the games for Liverpool have been shown on Sky. Look at the games on BBC, like mm. Bournemouth, the uh, Villa. You know, yeah. it, they, they're free and they they can sort of do that with those clubs. But when more people want to watch Liverpool, then they'll put that on Sky. And it just shows yeah. the way that football's being run. We saw that this season when we played Derby and we played West Brom. Those games were all um, put up by Sky, really. And it it's not very good for the fans, I don't think. And they need to look at themselves in the mirror, in my opinion. Mm. You know how I feel about Sky Sports moving games for their own benefit, especially away games to a, a midweek like we saw with Derby and we saw with West Brom. I'm not so I don't so much have a problem with them moving to twelve thirty, half five. I'm not they're not too bad for a home game, but uh, so, Sunday because uh, I know Sky Sports do a few Sunday games as well. I don't tend to mind them either. Um but it's the midweek ones I really don't like. But um, yeah, at this point, I don't, it would be nice to have football back because obviously we haven't had it for, what, three months now. But I still feel it's sort of too early. I maybe think they could have held back a, a, another couple of weeks. But then obviously you've got the argument. We've got the European Championships coming up ne- next summer. And yeah. how are we going to fit a... Uh, what is it, a 46 game season in the championship into almost 10 months? Because if clubs want in a pre season um, for ne- before pre next season, we're going to have to kick start it soon. Um, but if they do it, if they do it how it's been done in Germany, I think it could, will go well. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not in favour of it just yet. No, me neither. I think the testing that they've been doing is brilliant so far. I think that seems sort of reliable, but all it takes is for one person to get it and you've been in contact and training with them. Yeah. And then nope. someone else can get it. You know, someone from Stoke could easily get it, you know, but we just don't know yet. And I think it's too early to sort of get back into contact training. Yeah, I know Preston, um, I, I didn't read the full story, but apparently they started contact training a bit early and it's sort of gone around the squad a little bit. Um, so all it takes is something like that. Um, but if the, the vibe I'm sort of getting from the Bundesliga games is it's sort of like an academy match at the ground. I don't know if you've ever been to an academy match at a stadium, but um, yeah. it's really eerie. Like you've well, got... Yeah, not the one we, I went to. But. When, when they have the academy matches at the Bet365, you've got them... Lower tier of the town, not Tower Mountain. You've got the lower tier of the Franklin stand open, but it's not even the full lower tier. It, and you can hear everything the players are saying, everything the officials are saying, and that's the sort of vibe I got from the Bundesliga games. It does sort of feel like I'm watching an under 23s game. Um, but if it's done right, you know I'd welcome yeah. it. Yeah. Well, and, I'm gonna... Go on. and speaking of the football coming back, I know I've banged on about it. But I will be doing some live watch long streams. Um, Elliot will be joining us for a few of those. And uh, yeah, you can listen to me moaning about Stoke for three hours on the cold Saturday afternoon. Can't wait. But yeah. the, the, we are going to try and move this on a bit quickly because we are slightly pushed for time. Um, but the whole premise of this podcast was, as you can see by the title and thumbnail, we will be uh, ranking Stoke chance. Now, this is very subjective. Um, I know Elliot might have had a few different picks than me. Um, if you if you do want to get involved, be sure to leave it in the live chat. Be sure to leave it in the comments down below. Um, but without further ado, let's get started into uh, ranking these chance. We've got five tiers. We've got elite, good, average, not great, and stop singing. And there is, I, I've definitely put one in the stop singing. Um, so we'll kick start it with the Michael O'Neill song, the the drinks the whiskey one. 
I'm going to have to put that in Elite. It's a very um, good song. Yeah. I'm going to have to put that in Elite as well, I think. It's a decent song, yeah. I think it's got a similar vibe to the Mark Miniacer one, which we'll get on later, but I think you can tell which one I'm going to put that one in as well. It's yeah. great to have that sort of La Bamba song back, Feel Good Factor, particularly yeah. with the new manager giving us that Feel, fa- feel Good Factor as well. Yeah, Elite for me. It's sort of one that it's a really upbeat song as well, so it gets you going. Like, um, it works better in an away end, I think. So you look at Barnsley, West Brom, uh, Huddersfield, and Derby especially. Um, I know we might have lost Derby four 0 but um, especially before the game, it was re- it was bouncing. Um, it's just a shame it was the wrong end that ended up bouncing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a really good chant. Uh, credit to the Anita, Anita guys that uh, came up with it. it. It's definitely one of my favourite songs at the moment. Yeah. Next up is probably the song we're most famous for, Delilah. I'm going to put that in Elite. Same here, mate. Has to be, has to be Elite. It's just, it's part of us now. Like, I mean, we've got, obviously it was written by Tom Jones and everything, but like, some people just think it's been always a Stoke song at this point. Like, the young Stoke fans coming through, they didn't realise this was a number one hit back in, you know, the 1970s. They re- they've just known it for being Stoke, and that's sort of solidified that song with us. And I think yeah. it's brilliant. Like, you get the hardcore fans are really up for it, like, when they're singing that song. And I joined in at times. Didn't, like didn't, didn't know the full words when I was about nine years old. So, um, just to make sure that from no, we're- watching... I think um, there's no better uh, thing. Uh, I know you sit in the Franklin stand uh, when you go to games sometimes. Uh, yeah, I sit in Tile Mountain, so I don't see it as much. But in the Premier, in the final Premier League season, the relegation season, I was sat in the Franklin stand. And there's no better thing than seeing it just wrap around the booth and round the Tile Mountain stand and round into the South Stand corner. It, it, it really is good, especially a game like Swansea or um, Sheffield Wednesday, where we did get a late goal, and it's brilliant. Uh, Delilah has to go in elite for me. I can't wait to get back to the bet to sing it, uh, even away ends. It's brilliant. I love it. Yeah, same here, mate. Let's move on to the next one. The next chant, another elite one for me, will be with you. Um, part of that 1972 um, sort of golden age we had, um, sung by the squad of the 72 final, if I'm correct. And yeah. I think it works better in, in, in uh, I think it works better in an away end. Um, when we when the players come onto the pitch and we're singing it, um, it d- doesn't work as well as it should do. No. Um, I feel like it is a little bit quiet. The reason for that, I think, is my dad says this all the time when we go to the Bet365 with my uncle he just thinks it's ridiculous how we can go from this Eminem lose yourself song mm. like, like really pumped up there we'll be with be with you know it's just sort of like it just completely changes the whole mood in about two seconds yeah which is I, the only downfall for it yeah I think um the only bit that I find sort of loud is the city da, 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 that bit that's the only bit I find somewhat loud um even Delilah pregame can be a bit dead almost. But um, no, if there's a big game like the relegation game the, against Palace, you know, I was watching back yeah. the, um, is it Red Stokey? Um, with the Delilah and the Pottermouth bit. And that was that was brilliant. Um, we need it back like that, especially when we get back, it'll be absolutely rocking. Um, yeah, but yeah, we'll be with you in and away end when we're singing it upbeat. It's 100% elite. There's no better. Like I was going through my end of season video the other day and was trying to put all the clips in. There's a really good will be with you we had at West Brom towards the end of the game. It was brilliant. Yeah, for the history, I'm going to put it in elite. That's the thing. I'm, for the mm. history, I'm going to put it in there. I just don't think it works at the start of the game. That's mm. the only downfall for it. Like I don't think it works at the start of the game. I'd rather us come out to Delilah than us come out to will be with you. Because I think Nathan Delilah Heaney gets style. you more pumped up. Yeah, yeah, Nathan Heaney style. It gets you more pumped up, mm. yet for a game. We get probably more loud. We get more loud probably because of it during that, because we're loud at the start of the game, yeah. rather than having to sort of ease ourselves into the match. Yeah. I will sort of tangent almost, but I tell you what I would welcome back 
is the lineups getting read out when the players are on the pitch. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think we read the lineups out at the moment at about quarter to three. Uh, no one's really in the ground, and it, it, it's a bit meh. Like in the away yeah. end, it's you know they're already already they're all already in there, but in the home end, it is a little bit quiet. And it, you I know, so, yeah. looking back at some old footage I have when we used to read the teams out when they, when they were on the pitch after they come out, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. Yeah, a hundred percent. I definitely think that's the one thing we need to bring back. Yeah. I mean, if I, I I can't do it, obviously, but like if anyone at the club's listening, please listen to this. Just Number bring one, back this. Jack Butland. <laughs> That sort yeah, of thing. Like exactly. when, when all the players are on the pitch. I, the the only one, one that gets a really loud like roar is Ryan Shawcross at every yeah. game. But that's only because he's back in the team like every week because mm. he's been injured. I think if we can just do that, we can get a really good atmosphere going. If we can do that with Delilah as well, then we'll yeah. be absolutely rocking. Yeah. Um, speaking of a rocking chant, and I absolutely love this one. Stoke go down, we all go down. I'll put it in good. I'll put it in decent. Like, yeah, good, decent. It's probably the same thing. It's a good song. Um, the Swansea away is the one where I think of it most. And the under-21s game against Vale, uh, that's when I think yeah. of it most. And it is a good song, especially when we're all up for it. Um, it's it's yeah. really good in the concourse as well, I find. I think, yeah, that song just really showed how cocky we were, sort of like thinking the championships are Tim Potley, we'll just yeah. go straight back up. We'll, we'll get a fifth star on the ale, yeah. come back up, win the cup, out of yeah. Vale. You know, we just were so confident we were going to get back up. and We um, didn't either. It, yeah, the chant aged well. Yeah, it lasted uh, about six months before we were just like... <laughs> yeah, but I put it in good, because it's, it's sort of like... Um, it reminds me of the old Stoke, like a bit of a battle cry, like really aggressive, you know, hard Brexit and all that. I love yeah, it. we have started to bring that back a little bit, which I personally like. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sort of good when there's no Pulis football involved, I think, because Pulis football is sort of paint drying stuff at times. And mm -hmm. I think the fact that we've got like this high pressing stuff and it's exciting, it's brilliant. We've got, you know, Brexit Smith. We've got, um, you know, I know you love him, mate. I love um, Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith is underrated. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, Criminal I mean, the fact that we've got these players, like, there's so much stuff we can do to get this ground going again. Like I said, Delilah at the start, mm. read the teams out, and then yeah. you've got the players on the pitch who get the fans loud through like their, you know, hard mentality. It's like um, a couple of times where I sit, you've got McLean coming over to the near side because obviously he has to come to our side to take position, and he's like giving it all of that and stuff like that, especially before a massive game, it's brilliant. And it, it's yeah. great to see that like it's Danny Bart springs to mind, McLean springs to mind, they're getting us pumped. Jack, when he runs in front of the booth and end uh, before he gets ready, you know, that gets the booth and end going then, doesn't it? Uh, and it sort of reminds me of Barnsley when we were away at yeah. Barnsley uh, and at West Brom as well. You know, the keeper coming towards us and we're getting up for it and it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, next one is City Till I Die. I'll put it in good. I'll put it in, yeah, good, decent. I think it's always been a classic chant. No, that's the thing. It's always it's a really sort of good chant to sort of get us going, which is why I put it in good and not average. But, like, sort of every club has that. And you'll, yeah. see, which ones I, you'll see which ones I mean when uh, I go into that average column a lot more. It's but, good because it gets us pumped up. That's the main yeah. thing. That's why I've just I'd, pushed it above. To be honest, if we're talking about songs that everyone has, I'd rather have a City Till I Die than an Alay Alay Alay. Yeah. I yeah. cannot stand Alay Alay Alays. I think some of them are very good, I have to say. But it's when it's sort of basically the same lyrics over and over again with different teams. It's just, we'll take out this player, but we'll replace him with this player. Yeah. It, it, I don't and, think it really works for Stoke either. I don't think there's a sort of, a lay a lay a lay chant you can get like to no. work. You know, I, I, I've you? welcomed I've welcomed it not being one of our chants because like most, especially late last season, every chant every team that came to us, you look at Sheffield United, you look at Rotherham, West Brom. you look at West Brom. Most teams that came up to us last end late last season had an a lay a lay a lay chant, and that's I didn't really mind them at first. I quite liked them, but then after you it's know, just got repetitive, home, really, it hasn't like, it? After every home game, it's just like, shut up. It's the same song every time. 
But the the one that sort of did my head in this season was Charlton. They saw yeah. it throughout the whole of the first half. They were a one man band, weren't they? Yeah. Next one, another chant that most teams have when I was just a little boy. I put it in good. I like that one. Especially yeah. when we're like, wash your mouth out, son. I like that. It's just proper go for it. And, you know, I put love it, it when we're in an away end. And it's just, rah, come on. I'll, I'll put it in elite. I'll put you it, put in, it elite. in elite. Yeah, I've got that step up. A, because I hate the veil. Yeah, and, we all uh, hate the veil. We all hate the veil with the obsessed bunch they are. Yeah. But, yeah, that's the first reason I put it in. Second reason is obviously, I don't think it gets sung enough. I think it needs to get sung a lot more. Yeah, personally. I I noticed that at like West Brom especially, like we we sung Michael O'Neill, we sung Tyrese Campbell when he scored, we'll get onto that a bit later on. Yeah. Sung will be with you a bit. Sung Delilah, of course, but we don't really sing. I think when I was just a little boy, sort of more of a concourse song. I think it was sort of when we were sort of we had that horrible year when um, we were in Division Three and Vale were in Division Two. For like, that was like the first time ever that Vale had been a division above Stoke. I think that's when we sing it when the rivalry was sort of like as strong as it was. But obviously the teams are sort of drifted apart. Stoke were in the Premier League for God knows how many long years, and Vale were closer to non-league. So yeah. I think it sort of drifted apart through that. But there's videos of um, Andy Wilkinson singing it, and it's just brilliant yeah. i love i love that song and it should be so more yeah i put it in i put it in good next one yeah. we love you city good another chant that sort of everyone has um you know yeah it's it's sort of overused we we i love it when we sing it when we've just won an away game and we're just there like we yeah you know it's brilliant like i remind That's... it reminds me of like blackburn away when we just when we just got that win, I thought my whole thing had disconnected then. Um, yeah, with Blackburn away when we just got that really good win, and that was brilliant. Yeah, West Brom as well. Uh, yes, West Brom away as well. That was really good as well. Um, yeah, I'll put, yeah it in but, I'll put it in decent. I'll but, put it in good. Better yeah. when it's sort of beat. Yeah, I've put it in de- I'll put it just above that in the decent column because it's... It's just great after you've won a, won a match. It's yeah. brilliant after you've won a match. And that's the only reason I put it in, because it just gives you that extra feel-good factor, doesn't it? Yeah. The next one, go on Stoke. So it's basically go on Stoke, come on Stoke. We tend to sing it more at home games. Average. Yeah, I'll put it in average it's, as well. Yeah, it's, it's all right when you've got... Like, I think it'd be better with a drum, but I don't like drums. I don't want um, a drum. I don't mind the people bashing the back of the boards, at uh, the back of the booth and end and stuff like that. I don't mind that. It's all right. Um, yeah, I put it in average. Yeah, I put it in average as well. I just think there's a there's a sort of a few teams like that, and we sing it in sort of like we either sing like go on, Stoker, go on, Stoker. like it's sort of I different. The, I think loads of teams. I prefer the more battle cry we have in away game. Yeah, yeah, I prefer that one. But I was going to say like. A lot of teams have that, like, go on, Villa, or go on, Wolves, or, you know, that's why I I have to put it in average, because, like, a lot of teams have that. Yeah, I have to agree. Average. Mm, I prefer it when it's more of an aggressive uh, and away game. Yeah, Um, I prefer it. Next one, oh, when the Reds. Average for me. Average for me. Got to go in average. A lot of teams have a, oh, when the Saints sort of chant to that tune. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I put it in average because I'm putting it, average there. I prefer it when it's all beat. Uh, yeah, as I, every... I don't like it when it's like really, really slow like that, and it's a bit. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. It's well, well, reds are common colour for a football scarf side as well. You've got Manchester United, you've got Liverpool. You yeah, know, these sides and they are going to sing that song because they play in red, and naturally we're going to sing that song as well. Yeah, so. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't want to get rid of it, but like, I just think it's average because every team. Yeah, has again, red. better an away game. Yeah. One I haven't heard in quite a while. Um, whether that's just because I can't remember. Uh, Stoke City FC by far the greatest team. I haven't heard that one in a while. But again, another song that a lot of clubs have put it in average. I put it in average as well. Completely agree with you there. It's. It's just because other clubs sing it. I think every club in the Football League has that song, whether you're playing in League Two or the Premier League. Yeah. I think you have that song. Like Sunderland, I've seen the Sunderland documentary. They've got it. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, Wolves have got it. I think 
uh, yeah. the last like one, the, I think. A pattern I've noticed with my notes, the the sort of ones that are unique to us, like the Michael O'Neill one, the Lila, We'll Be With You and stuff like that, it's they're higher up because they're unique to us and we're not... When I feel like there's a lot of bandwagon chants like the LALALAs. Yeah, I think so as well. I think if you look, if I'm looking at mine right now, I can see the average ones being everyone sings them, and not great ones being, come on lads, we could have done a bit better there, and then the decent ones being like club legends, you know, yeah. these sorts of things, and then the stop singing being snakes. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get onto that a little bit later on. Um, this one, um. I've spoken to a few mates about this one. I know we've spoken about it a little bit. Um, the the Ryan Shawcross and Tyrese Campbell shared chant. Da, 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 da. Come on. The reach up um, tune it is. It's shared by two players. I feel like, yes, we made the Tyrese one up on the spot. But no, yeah. not a fan. Um, I put it in not great because for two Two players like Ryan Shawcross and Tyrese Campbell, we could do so much better. Um, I know the Unita uh, group have been trying to make up a few chants for Ryan Shawcross especially and Tyrese Campbell. I've got um, a sort of good one for Tyrese Campbell. I haven't said it on air yet. I haven't even told you yet. Do you know where? Tyrese Campbell, baby. Tyrese Campbell. That's it. Whoa. Um, that I think that be, might be quite good. Don't you want me, baby, isn't it? Yeah. Um, not sure who it's by, but again, that's a good chant. Um but what I yeah. hope, what I hope, what I really hope, is we'll get onto this chat later. I hope the next season Tyrese takes the number ten because that is yeah. such a good tune with his name on that. Isn't yeah, it? I think everyone and he deserves knows it as well. Which I think everyone knows which chant we'll get onto a bit later on. But uh, yeah, I put it in not great because for two of our best players, they share a chant. Um, I know you need to group. We're trying to come up with something uh, January February time. Uh, Dirty old town. Uh, by the Pogues. Um, it's the Virgil van Dyke song for Liverpool. They were trying to um, sort of twist that to become a Ryan Shawcross chant. And to be fair, it really did. It worked really, really well. And if we okay. can get that song, it'll be brilliant. Okay. All right. Send me that as well when you. Yes, do. I will. Uh, I'll send you the lyrics if I can remember them. Um, I'm not singing on camera. Um, yeah. Next one. Uh, yeah, I've put the Tyrese Campbell, Ryan Shawcross shared one in. Not great because. Two of our best players sharing a chant. We need to sort of, we need to get. I'll, go on. I said I'll put it in sort of two things. I put Shawcross in average. Mm. I put Tyrese Campbell in not great. I know they're the same tune, and people say like, "Why have you done that?" It's just the same tune. Ty- yeah. Ryan Shawcross is a legend of Stoke City, and Ryan Shawcross deserves a statue. He's my favourite player, yeah. not other than that guy over there. But um, yeah. yeah, he's my favourite player, and. It's just become tradition now at the club. That's why it's average. Tyrese Campbell is just breaking through. And it must have been we just sang Ryan Shawcross's song. Like, let's think of one for Campbell. That would just come up with one Yeah, it's fresh in your head. You yeah, must have exactly. just sung Shawcross and that. Oh, same song. Go. Um, yeah. But no, I'm looking forward to maybe the United group uh, making up a new Tyrese Campbell song. Yeah. Um, because they've, they've made quite a few good ones. They made the O'Neill one. They've made the Sam Kluka Starman one. Yeah, uh, we're just waiting for that to uh, get yeah, sung on the way day. Yeah, uh, but that'll be another great song. Um, the next one, Kenwin is a Stokey. I put it in good, great song. I put it in elite. That was my favourite song growing it's up. It's one of my favourites. Yeah, I love that tune. Um, I love that tune. Yeah, yeah, I put it in good. I put it in elite, mate. It's brilliant. It's probably my favourite chant. Like I started going to Stoke at Kenwin's first year. And that was just starting to get sung around the ground. And that was my favourite chant of all of them. Like, better than Delilah, you know, better than these ones. So that's why it's got to be elite for me. My first ever favourite chant. It's such a good tune to get onto. We have a little dig at Steve Bruce, which is always good. So Yeah. Um, we sung it at um, Barnsley in the concourse. We sung it at West Brom, West Brom. a few times as well. Uh, West Brom was brilliant because we sung all the old ones, didn't we, all the way through yeah. the second half. That was brilliant. But yeah, Kevin does a stokey. I put it in good. Yeah, elite. The next one, we had about, we, again, another shared chant last season. Uh, the Everywhere We Go, six foot seven tall, Peter Crouch will score. And then we mixed it with the Peter Etta bow. Um, I put the Peter Crouch one in good, and I put the Etta bow one in good. I'll put the Crouch one, surprisingly, not great. 
It's all right. It's a good it's, chance. It's, all, it's a good chance. It's I all think. right. It's a good chance. I just don't think it can really sort of get you up in terms of a, like a sort of song that we need. But that's only one downgrade. But I just think we could have done better with someone like Crouch as like a world like renowned superstar. And it's yeah. just a little bit timid, in my opinion. Yeah. It, Crouch won it. I liked. Um, I preferred then his. Um, one. One. I preferred his one that was um, uh, Crouchy is a potter. Yeah. He looks like Rodney Trotter. Da, da. I love that, that, that one. I think that's again, my favourite Crouch one. song you can sort of bounce yeah. along to. Uh, that would be going in decent. As well. Yeah, like for that um, Rodney Trotter one going decent. The other one were going not great. Then the Etobo one, Blackburn away last season. What a great day out that was. Yeah, I literally had Peter Etobo song in my head for a solid three weeks after that. Um, Shame he's not around anymore, but uh, if he does come back next season, I definitely want to sing that song again. Um, yeah, I'll put them both in good. Uh, put um, Etobo's one in uh, good, and yeah, Crouch has already said. The next one is Ricardo Fuller, City's number 10. Um, I know you just mentioned about Tyrese potentially getting the number 10 uh, shirt next season if uh, Benick stays at uh, Bristol. I put Ricardo Fuller City's number 10 in good. Yeah, I put it... Uh, where did I put it? Oh, yeah, I put it in good as well. Decent. Um, you know, so many great players to wear the number 10 shirt and we've honoured the man to do it. You know, Ricardo Fuller, Alan Hudson, Michael yeah. Owen, you know, these... <laughs> yeah, still, I think we just basically copied play, that. Mark Lowen. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, won a Ballon d'Or. So, I mean, you can say you've seen a Ballon d'Or win a play for Stoke. Exactly. Not that bad. Shame it was probably the, one of the worst ones of all time. Yeah. But... But yeah, I think Tyrese deserves the number 10 out of everyone in that squad, considering his position. I think he'll take that chant, and I think it'll be another godly chant when we go. Yeah. When we um, say that again. Personally, I can see Vokes getting the number 10 back, and then nah, Tyrese getting number 9. Can. That's what nah. I can personally see. He's been, yeah, but he's been 9 at Burnley, and he's been 9 at Wolves, and you know, True. so it's his, it's, just, it's his traditional number, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ricardo Fuller, uh, good. Next one, I know which one you're which tier you're going to put this one in. The the Ale 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 Bojan chant. I've put that in good. I put that in. Uh, I don't want to be biased towards like Bojan, so I have put that in decent. So I'm not put for the guy. I would have put it in the leads, mm. but you know, I think I put it in decent because it's a really good upbeat song. You can get yeah. sort of go into, you know, it's you know tradition because he's from Spain as well. Yeah. So I, yeah, I love the love the guy, love the chant. So mm. decent. It'd be great if we had him still today um, and he was the number nine because we could have had a brilliant C Senor, yeah. couldn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know Liverpool do a really good one for Firmino. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind us get maybe signing a Spanish player, stick him in at number nine. And uh, yeah, the best yeah, in the world is Hossa Lumato. <laughs> See, that would have been a good one, but that's the same as number 11. Yeah. I think he changed at one point, then he went out on loan. I think, I swear, he changed to, like, number nine. And then he went out on loan. So, maybe. Uh, I'll try and recall. Can't remember. But, yeah, put the Bojan one in good, because it's just a really good song. Love yeah, it. I like it. Yeah. Mark Moniessa. Elite. 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 Definitely elite. You can't put that song anywhere else. It's probably one of... You ask... Um, sort of a Stoke fan our age your f- top five favourite songs and it probably does make it in there yeah. you know the Mark Moniesa one it will make it in there it certainly makes one of my top fives um, yeah Mark Moniesa elite what a yeah. tune elite what a tune what a guy you know such an upbeat tune for such an upbeat guy as well it just works perfectly doesn't it yeah I think because my um, I used to do like some soccer schools and my um, the uh, guy who runs it is a Tottenham fan and um, he said, what's that song you keep singing? It goes to the tune of La Bamba. Like, oh, yeah, the Mark Money Ace one. I went, yeah, sang it throughout the whole 90 minutes. Like, I'm not that even joking. Sang Tottenham throughout the away, whole thing. It? Tottenham away. We were 2-0 down and went to 2-2. Apparently, Stephen Ireland changed the game, he said as well. But, yeah, he said that the, for that whole game, they just sang that because it was such a brilliant tune. Mm, it is a great tune. Speaking of not-so-great tunes... No, sorry. Moving on to a not so great tune. Imperial at Shakiri, Afalai, Wheeling in the middle. I put it in not great. 
Uh, I've put it in not great as well, actually. I just think we could have done a little bit better. Bit of a tongue twister for me. Yeah, bit of a tongue twister you as know, well. You try and sing everyone needs a wheeling in the middle, everyone needs a wheeling. It's like... We didn't have a song for Glenn Whelan for years, and then Wheeler, we just come up Wheeler. with that. Well, it's just Wheelo, Wheelo. We'll get onto another one that's a bit repetitive as well. But yeah, I've put I've put um, yeah Shakiri, Afalai, and Bula. That one in not great. Yeah, not great for me either. I just think it's a bit repetitive, bit of a tongue twister. Like I said, you don't really know when Wheelan's going to come into this. You just sort of sing along with Afalai and Bula, and then oh god, everyone needs a wheel in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Tom Edwards, one of our own, average again. Average. Everyone yeah. sings. Basically, if you've got a player, if you've got a player at your club who's come through your academy, you local sing. Local lad, yeah. Local lads so are like. Uh, yeah. I know they don't sing at Villa for Grealish, but that would be an example. They probably Harry would have Kane. Sung that at they one sing it point. at Tottenham for Harry Kane. So Harry that's, Kane that's again. Example. That's one. Um, I'm trying to think as well. We can have a few one of our own right now with the academy we've got at the moment. Nathan Collins, he could definitely fit into that. Tyrese one. Campbell's probably got another. Well, yeah, Tyrese Campbell as well is in there. I think we have sung that a few times actually. Yeah. So I put average, yeah. average Tommy Edwards, one of our own. Great when we played Norwich last season. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. But um, no, just because it's yeah. Just because everyone sings it, that's the thing. Yeah. I think that I would. I like that he's got that chant because it does signify that he is one of our own, and he's, he literally is. You know, he's a Stoke lad, and he's like he resonates with both of us. You know, be both being Stoke lads as well. So, yeah, I put that one in average. Yeah, Stepping up here. a notch, Robert Hooth Hooth Hooth, German youth one, the massive German yeah. youth, Robert Hooth Hooth Hooth. Um, yeah, I put that one in good. I'll put that one in good as well, mate. We, we're agreeing a lot on this. We, we haven't right. actually like told anyone we, this. Just we, to say. We've both... I know the manager's one, we sort of discussed it together, but this one, we've completely gone our separate ways to do this one. Um, so, yeah. I, all I did was send him the list of the chants we were ranking, and there you go. Um, yeah, Robert Uthuthu, German Youth one. I put it in good. Great song. Great song when we sung it at uh, West Brom. That's probably the first time I'd ever heard it in an away end. Maybe. I'm not sure. I think I heard it once before. I think I started going to away games earlier than you, though. So, yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, I was there to see Robert Huth play for Stoke for a number of years. What a servant to the club he's been. And it is it is a really sort of like hard chant that you can get up yeah. towards. And Robert Huth was all about that with a tough yeah. tackle. No my dad messing was a, about yeah. and yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, my dad would always say that to me. He said, look what Robert Huth does. Watch the first two minutes. Look what he does. Just elbows a player in the face. Yellow card. And it's just like, um, yes, hello, my name's Robert. I will be your defender today. Good luck. Yeah. You know, just get the crowd on his side. Yeah. The sort of a player we sort of need in the championship because that's what the championship's all about. A bit of a sort of rough and tumble almost. Yeah. So you know, I mean, you look at some of the defenders you've got in the championship this season. And I know they're not defenders, uh, but you look at Ben Pearson. He's. I don't think we'll get another Robert Hooth though. I think no. we tried to replace him with Volshide, but unfortunately that didn't work out. But as I was saying about the championship, you've got so many aggressive defenders. You look at Pontus Janssen at Brentford. Um, you look at. I know he's not yeah. a defender, but you look at Ben Pearson. Um, you know, you've got so many sort of rough players in the division. Um, mm. Yeah. So I'd I mean, say... the closest one that's sort of a rough player now in our squad is probably Maka, Jimmy McLean, probably. McLean, I'd say. yeah, he takes no messing. Yeah. I, I genuinely would not like to be a right back. On an opposition right back at all, I'd uh, be, well, I'd request to play a left back, to be honest. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or just request to come off. Because um, even even on that right-hand side, he's still... Just let him injure you, and then, all, then you can go off. See, the, the thing is that I like, though, about Jimmy is, like, he... He always gives 100%, doesn't he? He gives 100%, but then as soon as he puts that hard, crunchy, chac- crunchy tackle in, everyone's like, go on, go on. And it's yeah. that sort of the old Stoke coming back, and it's, it is really good. Um, but so, speaking of... Uh, brilliant Irish players. We've got Super Johnny Walters. I put that in good. A great song, um, especially for an away end as well. Great tune. Uh, really upbeat as well, which I like. Um, yeah, I put that one in good. Yeah, the thing is, I I put it in average. The only reason is, is that 
I saw it like sung because I've obviously my first season supporting Stoke was Jonathan Walt was his first season at the club and that was starting to get sung. But I always I only used to go to home games that year. And it sort of got it was brilliant at first, like super, super John. And it is and it is a good tune, don't get me wrong, it's still a good tune. It just got a bit repetitive, like at home games. In the away ends, it's brilliant, but like in the home end, it's it just gets a bit repetitive at times because I yeah, think it's the, sort of like sort of most teams yeah. have a chant like that as well, but yeah, I, I love that Johnny Walters one. It's, it's something a bit different he about is, it. He is Superman, though. That's the thing. He is exactly. Superman. Yeah, so put uh, the Johnny Walters one in good, sort of bordering on good to de- uh, good to average sort of thing. The next yeah. one, uh, O.A. Ocean, Shakiri, the dribbles past defenders one. I put that in good, just missing out on Elite. Um, I know I could have chose any other Zerdan Shakiri song. We had Seven Nation Army for him. We had the um, Runners Down the Wing for me. But personally, that's my favourite Shakiri one. Um, so I'll put that one in good. And every time I hear the original song uh, by Earth, Wind and Fire, I do think of the, the Shakiri song. Yeah, I put that in the same as well. The only reason it just misses out on the lead is just because it's a bit dreary. And I think the fans get a lot more response from a like, big song, you know, like Delilah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love that Shakiri one. And um, every time I hear, again, as I just said, every time I hear the original song, I do sort of sing it in my head. Um, I know at high school prom last year, all of us Stout lads were, it came on and we were all singing the Jordan Shakiri version. It was brilliant. But um, yeah. If we, did that my pro, if we did that at my prom, I probably, probably would have got kicked out. We had we had Will Griggs. Uh, we had Will Griggs on fire in the app, turn it off. We had Will Griggs on fire. We had um, it's coming home. We had World in Motion. So that was like our, you know, ten minutes of fame, and then we had to get off. Yeah, apparently, apparently the dance floor wasn't a Terry, so he turned everything football related off. Proper. <laughs> I think there's a video on my Instagram of Will Grigg and him turning it off. Um, what was the other one we had? Um, Oh, sweet Caroline. Yeah, but that's yeah. not, that's, not like that. that's that's something else I'd welcome. Instead of jump around, I'll have sweet Caroline. Yeah, a lot of clubs do that though. I think Villa have that, which is yeah, the main Villa one. Um, but I don't want to be like a sort of club that copies someone. I don't want to be a, they do it. No, I don't want to become a bandwagon jump on club sort of thing. No. But like, like we had the sort, of, yeah, like we had the sort of thing with Eminem, and that's like our song, and no one yeah. else has that song, and it works brilliantly. Every time, every I time, again, every time like I hear it, it reminds me of Stoke. But like, if you look at a game like, say, Sheffield Wednesday, you know they put jump around on. We sung um, "We Love You City," I think, if I'm recalling it right. We sung "We Love You City," we do. Um, maybe oh when the Reds as well, um, mm. but how good would it have been to have Sweet Caroline? I know we do play it on a match day. We either play it at, like twenty minutes before the game. It doesn't. It's a bit early. We either play it because I sit at the top and it does take a while for everyone sort of to filter out of the lower bits as well. Um, they did put it on. I don't know what game it was. I think it might have been Sheffield Wednesday after jump around. But by which yeah. time everyone's out and it's, yeah, they're going to put yeah. it on, but put it on is, instead you can't, of jump around because I don't think I don't think jump around sort of works. No, you can't imagine a seventy-year-old man going to Stoke in the booth and end going jump, jump, jump. Yeah. You can imagine them going sweet Caroline, bu, 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 you know. Yeah, but we wouldn't sing bum bum bum, would we? We'd uh, use some explosives about about the veil. Um, yeah, we would. Uh, I know they put it on at I'd Derby after that. we after um, after Derby won, and um, yeah, we we mentioned the three words I've just alluded to. But speaking of songs that should stop, Arnie, Arnie, Arnie. I know we don't sing it anymore um, because but, he's a snake. I mean, yeah, yeah, because he's a snake. Um, but yeah, we just had to put one in that stop singing category, so we just thought of that one. Yeah, and we also, and I probably put the, not because it's a bad song, but put the Berahina one in Stop Singing because yeah, he's, Barry a, he's an idiot. Really good song. Really Not good. a bad song. I think, because my dad said there was a song about Alan Hudson. I was like, Alan Hudson, no, 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 I think it's sort of based off that a little bit. Yeah. Oh, but, there's another one I've literally just thought of. The Mama Beer Am Juice sharing with Mama Sidibe, the um, Give It Up by the Sunshine Band. I'd put that in good. What, Mama Beer and Juice, Beer and Juice, Mama? Yeah, no. uh, yeah it's, it's all right. It's not like you've got 
it's not like every club does that though, which is a good thing. Yeah, some clubs do it if it if yeah. the player fits. But I'd put I'd put that one in there. Yeah, I'd put that one in. Um, I thought I, I, thought, I genuinely thought I'd put on that one on the list. To average. Bordering on decent to average, I'd say. Yeah. Bordering. I'd just put that in the middle. I'll put it in good because it's a, another upbeat jump, uh, not jump around, but like sort of one you can uh, bounce along to. Because um, I, I, I do jump in and away, and for some reason I don't tend to clap. Um, I prefer to jump. That's personal preference. If you choose to clap, yeah. you can clap. If you want to jump, you jump. But as long as we're not all jumping like um, Derby County, then we're all sorted. So that does wrap up episode seven, I want to say, of the Harvey SCFC podcast. Again, a massive, massive thank you to Elliot for coming on. Um, and yeah, football's back very soon. I, I really am excited to do these watch long streams. I'm looking forward to doing them. We'll get some pre-match stuff going. We'll get some stuff during the match, loads of chat interaction. Um, we'll do a little sort of praise and grumble style thing afterwards where we get a few comments from the live chat. We get a couple of uh, messages read out on Instagram and stuff like that. I think it'll be really good. If I, if I can get it right, I think it'll be really good. Uh, I really am looking forward to it. I'm sure Elliot will be up for joining for a few of those. Um, but yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new around here. Drop a like if you enjoyed as usual. Uh, don't go. Bleh. Don't forget to check out the video I put together last week, um, which was the best bits of the season. Um, unfortunately, Huddersfield and Swansea away weren't in there as I weren't able to make it, uh, but I would have loved to have had them in there. But uh, yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed. Again, a massive thank you to Elliot for coming on. Stay, uh, make sure you all stay safe. Um, and yeah, see you guys in the next one. Elliot, do the honours. Go on, Stoke. Go on, Stoke.